Malcolm. What makes you think humanity is worth saving? It's been a while since we've gotten anything out of the Terminator franchise, and it's been even longer since we've gotten anything good. Terminator Dark Fate was, shall we say, at least mildly divisive. And I can't say Terminator Genesis did any favors for itself. On August 29th, we have a new entry into the franchise with Netflix's Terminator Zero. But does this entry work well in anime? Does it change the lore significantly? And is it any good? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part? Subscribing is totally free. The first time I ever laid eyes on in any entry in the Terminator franchise was when I was nine years old. I was visiting family on a farm, and so naturally I was very bored. My older cousin, who was painfully hungover, decided the only thing for me to do was to watch TV while he recovered. Little did I know that he would turn on one of the greatest films in cinema history, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Not only was this one of the best, if not the best action movie of all time, its story has become absolutely legendary. We all know the story. John Connor is a savior of humanity in its war against Skynet. So the evil AI sends a Terminator back in time to kill his mother, him, and a whole slew of others throughout the first three films in the franchise. But we've never seen the rest of the world in the Terminator universe. What did other countries do after Judgment Day? Netflix set out to explore just that question with an anime outing with Terminator Zero. Terminator Zero takes place in Japan in 1997, just prior to the original Judgment Day. Remember, T3 Rise of the Machines showed that John and Sarah Connor didn't stop Judgment Day in T2, they only postponed it. So at least on the surface, Terminator Zero takes place after T2 and before T3 in an alternate timeline, though all part of the same canon. Confused yet? Yeah, you're not the only one, but allow me to elaborate. Terminator Zero follows the story of Malcolm Lee, a scientist working on a competing AI to counter Skynet. Perhaps if they get an AI on their side, the humans can gain the upper hand in the war with the machines. But in the future, Aiko, a resistance fighter, is sent back in time to prevent Malcolm from turning on his AI named Kokoro. In the meantime, a Terminator is sent back to the same time in order to reprogram Kokoro to do Skynet's bidding. That's the story in a nutshell, without any spoilers. The issues with Terminator Zero are many, but why don't we start with the positives, shall we? First off, I have to praise the animation. The art style is beautiful and really faithful to the general aesthetic of the Terminator franchise. Although some people aren't into anime as I've discussed on Thirsty Thursdays, but this series works surprisingly well in this format. My buddy and fellow YouTuber Kyle Corwith's main gripe with anime is that the characters don't show emotions very realistically, and that could be true with some animes, especially older ones. When Kyle told me this, I actively watched to see how the animation style and emotions were shown in Terminator Zero, and I've gotta say, it's pretty spot on. The characters emote very well. The story provided a fresh take on a very tired franchise, showing what happened outside of America during the time of Judgment Day and the Resistance was a much needed lore expansion. Kind of like Fallout with the fan-made Fallout London, Terminator Zero expands outside of US borders to show what the rest of the world looks like in the apocalypse. While I found the story very good, something was nagging me. This series really dives in much deeper into the philosophy of existence and time travel than any other film in the franchise. I love it when philosophy makes its way into pop culture. Stories having deeper meaning and exploring complex ideas are what makes them go from good to great, and Terminator Zero is no exception. 
the conversations between Malcolm and Kokoro, as well as some of the other tertiary characters, dive into very deep questions in philosophy, such as, is humanity worth saving? Many other franchises, including X-Men, have handled this topic with varying degrees of success. Terminator Zero falls into this camp. The sentient AI Kokoro asks Malcolm this question several times without an answer. Perhaps it's something unknowable to humans themselves, whether they are worth saving or not. We'd like to think we are, but are we really capable of answering this question at this point in our evolution? I mean, we're not even a type 1 civilization yet. These sorts of existential questions were quite well crafted in the narrative of the series. But there was one thing which actually made total sense from a physics perspective that messed with the lore of the Terminator franchise. This was the concept of time travel. Time travel has been handled in a myriad of ways in movies, TV shows, books, and other stories. But generally speaking, the Terminator franchise, as it was set up in the original Terminator and its two direct sequels, assumed that going back in time was a linear and cyclical concept. Imagine that this line represents time. Here's the present, 1985, the future, and the past. Prior to this point in time, somewhere in the past, the timeline skewed into this tangent creating an alternate 1985. Alternate to you, me, and Einstein, but reality for everyone else. While we were in the future, Biff got the sports book, stole the time machine, went back in time, and gave the book to himself at some point in the past. Like Doc Brown explains in Back to the Future 2, this version of time travel assumes you're going back into your own past, or the past. And this is where Terminator Zero changes the lore. It's subtle, but rather very important. The anime series assumes that each time you go back in time, your presence in that past creates a new future. So you're not going into the past, you're going into a past, separate and disparate from your own. This is an important change, because it messes with the underlying assumption of the first four films in the franchise. The physics of time travel are actually quite interesting, and our understanding of these physics has evolved quite rapidly since Terminator came out in 1984. The development of string theory shows just this. What if you wanted to go back into your own childhood and visit yourself? We can imagine folding the fourth dimension through the fifth, jumping back through time and space to get there. But what if you wanted to get to the world where, for example, you had created a great invention as a child that by now had made you famous and rich? We can imagine our fourth dimensional selves branching out from our current moment into the fifth dimension. But no matter where you go from here, the great child inventor timeline is not one of the available options in your current version of time. You can't get there from here no matter how much choice, chance, and the actions of others become involved. There were only two ways you could get to that world. One would be to travel back in time, somehow trigger the events that cause you to come up with your invention, then travel forward in the fifth dimension to see one of the possible new worlds that might have resulted. But that would be taking the long way. The shortcut we could take would involve us folding the fifth dimension through the sixth dimension, which allows us to instantly jump from our current position to a different fifth dimensional line. As this example clearly shows, going back in time is taking the long way, but the very act of going back creates a new past for your current present. This is what Terminator Zero attempted to explain, and it's not entirely a bad change to the lore. On the contrary, it opens the possibility to a multiverse, but it also, philosophically, alters the original theme in the original Terminator and T2 and T3 that each espoused that there is no fate except the one you make for yourself. It's actually a question explored pretty well in the original Matrix where Morpheus asks Neo, Do you believe in fate, Neo? No. Why not? Because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. I know exactly what you mean. This is something that I've been racking my brain about in my spare time. If the multiverse is real, 
and there's an infinite amount of timelines, then free will actually can't exist. Because no matter what you do, you can't change your own timeline without creating a new one. Skynet keeps sending back Terminators and it does fuck all for its chances against the great John Connor. This is something that Terminator Zero explores really well, but it opens a whole can of worms with its introduction of a multiverse and the lack of free will. But it's made me think, truly think, about the nature of existence. And in the end, isn't that what great cinema is all about? But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Terminator Zero? And what about its changes to the lore? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.